In chapter 10.3, we're going to talk about control of the cell cycle. So what leads to the different steps in there. Uh, in the last section, we talked about the cell cycle phases. Uh, we're going to talk about what we call the checkpoints in here. And we need to talk about why we have super, super strong control of the cell cycle. Uh, this picture, uh, here we have Checkpoint Charlie, right, in Berlin, um, might seem a little hyperbolic, but really it is really strong control over the checkpoints in the cell cycle. We do not want to progress through the cell cycle improperly. Uh, there are some negative consequences to that. So we'll talk about the signals that are positive regulators and the signals that are negative regulators of the cell cycle, things that uh, push it through and things that hold it back. We'll talk a lot about the G1 checkpoint, uh, G2 to M transition, and uh, during metaphase, some of the checkpoints that are in here. These are the big checkpoints that we'll talk about. So the cell cycle and its timing can be variable. Um, depending on the cell, they might divide frequently, they might never divide. Uh, we look at something like embryonic cell division. So very early on in development, we're talking every few hours cells might be dividing. Later in life in a mature human, we might see epithelial skin cells dividing every two to five days. Like we talked about previously, neurons and cardiac cells, uh, they go into G0, that quiescent phase, and don't divide for the rest of the organism's life. In cell culture, when we put little bits of human tissue into cell culture, we're looking at uh, division about every 24 hours. Now, that might seem pretty quick, but when we compare that to like bacteria, bacteria can divide every 20 minutes in some cases. So we're not quite as quick as them, but uh, under ideal conditions, human cells will divide about every 24 hours. The breakdown of the different phases that they spend their time in can be found here. We spend of that 24 hours, about uh, nine of that in uh, G1. We then spend about 10 hours in S phase. Remember, that's where we're synthesizing the DNA, making copies of the genome. It's actually the longest portion of the cell cycle is copying the whole genome. The genome's very big, so it's not surprising it takes quite a long time to get through it. Then we recover in G2 for about four and a half hours. And then mitosis itself is only about half an hour. It's real quick compared to the other bits. So we don't actually spend a lot of time in the mitotic division part. It's all the preparation to get ready for that. The cell cycle is regulated by external events. Signals from outside the cell that will either initiate or inhibit cell division. Uh, this is really important because we need cell division to happen at the proper time in the proper place. This could be external signals like human growth hormone, HDH, that can stimulate um, uh, cell division. So here is a growth hormone receptor, okay? And when it receives growth hormone, it does a lot of stuff. You can see lots of different things are happening here, being activated, and they go on to uh, affect different genes in the genome that lead to the cell cycle progressing. When cells start to get crowded, like when you get too many cells clumped in an area, they actually receive signals that, hey, there's too much of us here. We're going to slow down cell division. Also, when cells physically get large, when the cell itself becomes large, that can stimulate division as well. This crowding of cells is actually kind of important when we look at things like uh, tissue culture, like I showed you previously, where we grow human cells in a plate. We have to have ways of overcoming that. It's also really important to prevent tumor cells from growing. When tumors grow, they tend to grow lots of cells in a small area. That is because of a breakdown of some of the mechanisms that prevent that from happening. So we'll talk a little bit about cancer in this uh, section as well. So there's three primary checkpoints uh, for the cell cycle, and those happen at G1, uh, G2, and going into uh, M phase, near the end of uh, metaphase. So uh, we need to control growth and division. Uh, division at the wrong time could 
one, lead to improper distributing of the genetic material. If we haven't duplicated the genome, right, we can't split it properly. And that M checkpoint is super critical because that's when everything's attached and all ready to go and get pulled apart. So let's look at what's happening at each of these. Also, remember, too much cell division could lead to cancer. Cancer is over uh, production of cell, cell division. So let's look at this, the checkpoints here. So the G1 checkpoint, uh, we are going to get to this point and stop uh, right at the end of G1. This is determining if conditions are good for division. So once you've done all this growth, you need to stop and make sure everything's looking good in there. Um, and once passed, the cell is pretty much committed to cell division. So once we pass this G1 checkpoint, uh, there's real no stopping it. The um, external signals that are here are very important. And the cell is going to check for genetic damage at this point, right? That's really critical. We're about to duplicate the genome. If the cell finds any damage to the genome, it's probably not good to divide and it will stop itself from dividing. It doesn't want to pass on any mutations. Okay, so once we go past that, we synthesize the DNA and we go through G2, which is kind of our recovery phase after DNA synthesis. Then we have the G2 checkpoint. This is preventing entry into mitosis. That's critical because we gotta make sure everything's ready to divide the cell in half. It checks the cell size and that there's enough proteins in reserve to do all of the complicated things and pulling apart that we're gonna need to do. Also, critically, this ensures that all of the chromosomes have been replicated properly. So remember in DNA synthesis, we duplicated the genome. The G2 checkpoint is checking to make sure that all went properly because we wanna make sure we have the correct number of chromosomes when we go to divide. Then once we pass that, we enter mitosis. And near the end of metaphase, there is a checkpoint that determines if all the sister chromatids are properly attached to the spindle fibers and everything's ready to be pulled apart. Once we go past that, we finish cell division. So these three checkpoints, right? Basically this one, G1, are we gonna start dividing? If we determine that everything's looking good, we go through duplicate the genome. G2 checks that all the chromosomes have been replicated properly. Then we enter into mitosis. Uh, M phase there uh, in metaphase, that's making sure that everything is attached properly to be pulled apart. So what are the actual signals that are leading to progress through these checkpoints or blocking progress through these checkpoints? Well, we need to talk about two types here. We need to talk about positive regulators. These are substances that will push the cell cycle forward. And then negative regulators, these are substances that will hold the cell cycle back. Oftentimes, this signaling is highly redundant. We don't want the possibility that one failure breaks the whole system. So there are often many of these things that are in there. We will talk about a few of them, but there might be multiple signals at the checkpoints. So let's start with some positive regulators. So here are uh, an example of positive regulators. This system is called the cyclin system, and it has cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases, or CDKs. These are positive regulators. All right, so how's this system working? Well, it's a two-piece system. We have the cyclin-dependent kinases that the cyclins will bind to. The system will be positive when they are bound together. So that will push the cell forward through the checkpoints. So let's look at this. So CDK levels, the cyclin-dependent kinases, those are stable. We have those throughout the cell cycle but the levels of each cyclin protein uh, vary depending on different times. So here we can see uh, cyclin D is expressed broadly as we move through the cell cycle and then it drops. Um, ignore cyclin D for the moment. Let's look at cyclin E, A, and B. Cyclin E levels peak, and you will notice this is the G1 checkpoint here. So when cyclin E levels go up, that pushes the cell through the G1 checkpoint. We then move over to the G2 checkpoint. 
Cyclone A ramps up as the level increases passing a threshold that will push us through that G2 checkpoint. And then the M phase uh, checkpoint is controlled by Cyclone B levels. Okay. What controls when these go up and go down? That's a great question. There's lots of other things behind the scenes controlling these expressions because these are proteins and they get made as well. But the cyclins themselves are one of the factors pushing the cell through the checkpoints. So the cell will stop at this checkpoint until these proteins build up to a level that sends them through. These uh, function uh, by phosphorylating things. So the cyclin dependent kinase is a kinase. That means it phosphorylates things. So uh, they need to be phosphorylated and then they phosphorylate other proteins, which leads to that cascade that we've talked about. Here's a diagram of that, right? Here's our CDK, cyclin dependent kinase, and the cyclin binding to it. Then it is phosphorylated. We add a phosphate to it and that Phosphate can be transferred to the target protein, which goes and pushes us through the cell cycle. So I'm going to tell you confusing things because there are regulators of the regulators. There are things that can inhibit the CDKs as well. So this regulation, we're taking the less complicated overview of it. So these are positive regulators. When they interact, they push the cell forward through the cell cycle. What about negative regulators? Well, negative regulators prevent the cell cycle from occurring. Many of these are called tumor suppressor proteins. We have a few that are very, very well studied. Things like retinoblastoma protein, RB, P53, P21. These are our best studied negative regulators. And they're called tumor suppressors because they are negative regulators. When they're on or when they're present, they prevent cell division, which could prevent improper cell division, which could lead to tumors. So negative regulators are often called tumor suppressors. When they break, that could lead to tumors. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, so when we look at cells where these are broken, uh, we try to figure out what they've been doing. And most of the cells where these break divide uncontrollably, so they cause cancer. So that's where the naming came from. Most of these work at the G1 checkpoint there. They're holding us at that G1 checkpoint, preventing us from going through the rest of the cell cycle. Okay, what do they do? Well, RB uh, negative regulates positive regulators. So here's where it gets a little complicated, right? We have positive regulators. They're negatively regulated, right? So we remove negative regulation then the positives can work i know that's getting a little little bit inception there um, what they really do is they're preventing proteins called transcription factors from binding so um, here is a transcription factor uh, and rb is preventing it from binding to the dna what is a transcription factor they're dna binding proteins that lead to gene expression so when rb gets phosphorylated the transcription factor can bind and that leads to genes being activated. The cell is moved into the cell cycle. So basically removing a negative causes a positive to happen. Uh, P53, that's another interesting one. P53's role is to check for DNA damage. If it detects some, it tries to initiate repair. But if it realizes there's too much DNA damage, it actually sends the cell into apoptosis, that programmed cell death. So we've seen negative regulators, we've seen positive regulators. Uh, let's think about the consequences of mutations that uh, might happen in these. So what would be the likely consequence of a mutation that uh, happens in a positive regulator of a cell cycle? Okay, and also what would be the likely consequence of a mutation in a negative regulator of the cell cycle? Pause the video, think deeply about this. There are a couple of avenues here. Okay, positive regulators. Well, in most cases, mutations tend to break the function of the thing that has had the mutation in it. So if it's a positive regulator that has a mutation in it, it's probably broken. That means it cannot do its function as a positive regulator. So the cell cycle stops. That's not a terrible outcome, actually. Uh, if something is broken, we generally don't want that cell to divide and replicate and pass on that brokenness, right? 
Now, there is a, another possibility that I'll come to in a moment, but let's think about the same thing in a negative regulator. If we have a broken negative regulator, it cannot do its job of negative regulation. That's a little more problematic, right? Because now the cell is free to go through the cell cycle, even if it's not ready to. That could lead to overproduction of cells, too much cell division, which could lead to tumors and ultimately cancer. Now there's a second possibility here that is a little more problematic for the positives. There are some mutations that basically make things like positive regulators constantly be stuck on. Okay. Those are rarer, but they can happen. If our positive regulator is constantly stuck on, that's constantly pushing the cell through the cell cycle. That's bad, right? That could lead to cancer. If we had the same thing happen to a negative regulator, well, the cell can't divide. So again, that's not a terrible outcome for it. So there's both uh, loss of function mutations and what we call gain of function mutations that can occur. And both of those do happen in many cancers. All right, so that's regulation of the cell cycle. In the next section, we will talk about what the consequences of misregulation are. Different cells need to divide at different rates, as we talked about. Some never divide, some divide quite frequently. External signals like hormones uh, can regulate the cell cycle. We have checkpoints inside of there. The G1 checkpoint, it's kind of the point of no return. Once you pass that, cells committed to dividing. The G2 checkpoint ensures proper chromosome replication has occurred. And then that M checkpoint in uh, metaphase checks that all the sister chromatids are attached properly so that they can be pulled apart there. We talked about both positive regulators of the cell cycle that push the cell through the checkpoints. We had the example of the cyclins that interact with the cyclin dependent kinases to be positive regulators. We also saw negative regulators of the cell cycle. These hold the cells at checkpoints. We have tumor suppressors like P53 and RB that are both proteins that stop the cell from dividing. They're negative regulators. All right, we'll see uh, some what happens when these things break in the next section.